And this is Matt again, and I'll be talking about uh, our approach to post-quantum crypto. So um, as cryptographers, we select algorithms based on how long we need it to deliver a security property. So for something like confidentiality, we might need it to protect data for 15 years. And if we know it's going to take five years to update and deprecate our old deployments, then I need an algorithm uh, that is secure for 20 years. So we want the algorithms to be, in addition to being secure, which I'll define later, uh, we want the algorithms to be universally accepted, um, contained in hardened implementations or in hardware, and meet our performance needs. So there are two aspects of what we mean by secure. One is the computational complexity of the best known attack. And this is a formula uh, or a number based on the algorithm parameters. And this, is def this defines sort of the maximum security lifetime. Next, we want to have a sense of how sure am I that a, another better attack is, is not coming. And this is less numeric. It's developed through the cycle of design, analysis, sharing, spawning new design or analysis that gets us to a position of confidence that the next best attack will take a significant amount of time. And I like to think of this as like exponential back off. It's usually not never. So one of the problems we worry about is nearly all our customers are transmitting their data over the internet using public key cryptography or public key protocols. And an adversary can selectively intercept and store this data. And at some point in the future, a new sort of best known attack appears at which time an adversary can harvest the recorded data, potentially learning customer uh, uh, secrets. So one such capability we're aware of is uh, quantum computing. Uh, two quantum algorithms introduce new best known attacks against the classical crypto systems we use today. Uh, Shor's algorithm solves the discrete log and integer factorization, breaking finite field, RSA, and elliptic curve cryptography. And Grover's algorithm can search <clears throat> an unsorted list of n terms in about the square root of time. And this reduces by square root the security of these symmetric schemes. So the advanced encryption standard or the SHA algorithms, uh, secure hash algorithms are impacted by a square, square root. And this is not catastrophic as these algorithms have variable security levels of 128-bit or 256-bit. And we can just migrate to the 256-bit versions, maintaining 128 bits against a quantum adversary. So fortunately, no, at least for cryptography, no quantum such quantum computer exists today of that scale. So there are significant hurdles to overcome to develop such a large-scale quantum computer. But we can speculate a potential future of computer develop of quantum computer development under our existing sort of harvest store and harvest threat model. So for information like temporary credentials, uh, maybe you need minutes to hours, earning reports, or credit card information up to five to eight years, maybe all in a time frame, we can be reasonably certain that no such large-scale quantum computer exists. But if we start to look a little further out at shopping habits or classified information, we're out 20 to 30 years where we're now at a point where we might want to augment the security properties provided by our existing public key protocols. Uh, looking further out to genomic data, you might want to protect this for multiple lifetime. It's really beyond what we can reliably reason about uh, when it comes to future advancements in cryptanalysis. But we can still select algorithms based on that maximum lifetime against the best known attack and a model of computational improvement like Moore's law. And that's how we typically do in, in selecting our uh, algorithms today. So we need new public key crypto systems that are secure against a large scale quantum computer, so-called post-quantum or quantum safe algorithms. These are algorithms that run on classical computers we use today, but are not known to be vulnerable to a, such a large scale quantum computer. So our existing public key algorithms are defined on integer factorization and discrete log, which are broken by quantum computer. However, there are a host of other math problems that are computationally hard that give rise to new public key algorithms uh, that provide lattice-based, coding-based, and isogeny-based uh, cryptographic schemes. So we started talking about these issues early on, and when it came to publishing our viewpoint about development of new PQ system protocols, we decided not to. Uh, instead, I was coached and encouraged to take an Amazonian approach, which was how do we deploy post-quantum crypto at AWS, and then talk about that. 
So we know we knew we needed to work with national organizations like the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, global research and standards communities like the Institute for Quantum Computing at the University of Waterloo, the European Telecommunications Standards Institute, ETSI, and the Internet Engineering Task Force, IETF. During the past five years, NIST made a call for new post-quantum algorithms. We're happy to contribute to two of these schemes, Bike and Site, that are included in the round three uh, alternate key encapsulation mechanisms. And NIST is one of the few organizations that can really corral the open community of cryptographers to participate in that design analysis cycle to get to new high assurance schemes. Um, NIST held its third PQC conference last week and they indicated that they're, they're sort of on target to select uh, one or more algorithms by the end of the year for draft standards in 2022, hopefully for a final standard by 2024. So our proposal has been, as we gain assurance in these new post-quantum schemes, to execute a hybrid key exchange. Without adding additional messages to the protocols, we want to execute two key exchanges. The first key exchange is represented uh, by paint cans as elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman, and the second by a post-quantum cam uh, um, by the safe. Alice initiates this by generating a post-quantum chem key pair, SK and PK, and uses a public can of paint G and mixes in a secret <laughs> color D um, to get this secret color. And she sends over to Bob this, I mean, this public color green and sends that color green and the open safe over to, over to Bob. Bob also starts with the same public can of paint, mixes in his secret color K and starts the encapsulation mechanism to get a shared secret. Completes the encapsulation to get a ciphertext, a new can of paint, and sends the sealed ciphertext and the can of paint back over to Alice. Now Alice can decapsulate that safe, uh, uh, that shared secret using her secret key to get the same shared secret. And Bob and Alice both add their, their secret color to the exchange cans of paint to derive a new secret color, DKG. And then they just concatenate those two secrets or really mix them together using a key derivation function to encrypt the communication channel. And any onlooker that gets to see all the public values, G, D, G, K, G, the public key and the ciphertext, doesn't learn any of these secret values. So the protocol flow is designed to be as secure as the strongest of the two schemes. So an adversary would need to break both of these schemes to break the key agreement protocol. So we've added three post-quantum cipher suites for TLS 1.2 and 1.3 to S2N, our open source TLS implementation. We added Bike, Psych, and the third round candidate, Kyber. Uh, it's in S2N mainline today, deployed on the AWS key management service, what we consider one of our most security sensitive services. And we know performance is critical to, to adoption. Uh, performance data for us so far is promising, uh, but preliminary. We're working over pretty homogeneous networks right now, uh, but we're seeing about 300 microseconds or 0.3 milliseconds of doing uh, Kyber alongside EC Diffie-Hellman. And it adds about 2,300 bytes to the wire. Um, these can be improved, all these timings can be improved uh, quite a bit by going to assembly optimized versions. These were uh, straight C implementations. So one of the things we've learned along the way was, you know, at PQ is really uh, about adding crypto agility. Uh, crypto agility requires a few things. Uh, algorithm diversity, multiple algorithms that provide the same cryptographic function, requires an interface at the right abstraction layer and a discipline to use it. When we engineer agility in our applications, we need to carefully reason about the trade-offs with complexity, and we need to control the low-level cryptographic library. So we launched a new cryptographic library called AWS Lib Crypto. Um, we've added more formal verification to, to many of the algorithms, and the library is currently listed under FIPS testing for certification. Um, and finally, you need to separate the crypto configuration uh, uh, from the application. So that's, uh, that's all I have. What I want you to take away is AWS is doing some neat stuff. Customers are going to expect PQ security, both within AWS and probably in your perspective field. Our plan is to use hybrid key agreement as these PQ schemes mature, and we have solutions today that you can evaluate, use, and contribute to. So I'm gonna stop here and turn